Hello and welcome to the Friday, October 14th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I am recording from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Cisco's TALUS research team published a blog post today describing a new attack framework that they are calling Alchemist and Insect. Alchemist is the command control server implementing a web-based interface to control systems infected by the insect implant. Alchemist is implemented as a simple single file and executable. This, of course, uh, makes it kind of easy uh, to install on random uh, compromised uh, web servers that the attacker may be using as part of their command control infrastructure. It does run on Windows and uh, Linux. And Talos states that uh, the overall design is reminiscent of Manjuska, if I pronounce this correctly, a command control framework that uh, Talos discovered a short while ago. As a victim connects to the Alchemist command control server, the insect payload is then generated on the fly. There is sort of a template that's present on the server and it hot patches then some uh, customized configuration parameters for the particular victim connecting. Talus lists more details and tips on detections in its blog post. And of course, there are already some snort rules available for that. The Alchemist command control server has been seen, as I said, on Windows and Linux, but the insect implant uh, does also work on Mac OS. VM2 is a JavaScript sandbox meant to isolate untrusted code. Always something uh, difficult to get right. The sandbox is not only very popular, it has 16 million downloads a month, but it also suffered from a vulnerability that, well, allowed malicious code to escape the sandbox, which then, of course, could lead to arbitrary code execution on the host running any software that depends on the VM2 sandbox. Like I mentioned, this is difficult to get right. We have seen problems with all kinds of sandboxes and sandbox escape all the way up to uh, virtual machines, of course, and uh, Kubernetes and uh, containers and such. But uh, in this case, of course, uh, JavaScript is being run that's provided by the user and uh, the sandbox is trying to isolate this, which could, for example, also be used by malware engines and such that try to protect themselves from a likely or possibly malicious uh, JavaScript. The vulnerability is rated with a CVSS score of 10 and it was assigned a CVE number of 2022-36067. And talking about uh, NPM packages and really uh, many package managers, uh, there is a particular issue if you have an internal package and then an attacker is creating a public package by the same name in order to trick you into installing that public package that, of course, then may contain some malicious code. Now, the problem in pulling off this attack is that the attacker needs to know the name of the internal package that they're trying uh, to impersonate here. And uh, well, in the past, there have been sort of some issues with uh, software leaking the name of these packages, but a uh, new and sort of interesting, not I'm not sure how practical attack uh, was not proposed by Aqua, where they looked at timing issues. If you're not authenticated in order to really you know, see the package, you may still be able uh, to deduct whether or not the package exists by checking how long it takes for the error message to come back. In the tests that Aqua did, the difference was sort of around 600 milliseconds if the package does not exist and 100 milliseconds if it does exist. So about half a second here, uh, certainly something that's detectable. You may need a couple of attempts because uh, there is quite a spread in these response times. This is actually sort of a common issue that databases respond slower if something doesn't exist. For example, this has come up in the past when you try to brute force if a username doesn't exist or exists in a web application, it often takes longer for a login page to respond and give you the login failed message if the user does not exist. 
And I mentioned uh, earlier this week, uh, maybe even last week, uh, that uh, there is a significant flaw in Simbra, the uh, webmail system that's already being exploited. Well, the flaw really wasn't in Simbra, it was, it was in the CPIO utility that uh, Simbra uses. This flaw has now been addressed by Simpra, and really the way they addressed it is they just recommend that you install PAX, which is the alternative to CPIO. This mostly affects Ubuntu, uh, which does not have PAX installed by default. Red Hat, another distribution CentOS, already had PAX installed by default. If it's available, then Simpra will use it instead of CPIO. But this update of Sempra also uh, fixes two other vulnerabilities, one of them a cross-site scripting issue. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.